Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to keep working on my Sprite Navigation Menu, a navigation menu that relies on a background image with a shifting background position. Okay, so in the last video, I simply created an unordered list navigation menu, and I used this master image as a background image for the anchor tags. My anchor tags are converted into block elements, and I shifted the background position up 40 pixels so that only the red part of the multi-state image is visible. I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to get rid of this red border. don't need that red border anymore. That was really just there as a visual aid. And so this is how my anchor tags are looking. What I want to do next is when I hover over the red um, anchors, basically, I would like to see the green portion or maybe even the black portion. That might look pretty cool. So I'll try the black, actually. So what I want to do now, pretty easy, is in my nav anchor do the hover state pseudo class. And my background image has already been set with my main anchor rule, so I don't need to redo that one. The only thing I need to do is change my background position. So I'm going to do background position. And remember, the first number, I can do 0px or just 0. If the uh, measurement is 0, you don't actually need to put the px in there. And then I need to decide, well, what do I want to do with my background image? A negative y is shifting the background image up. A positive number shifts it down. Whenever in doubt, I'll just go into 0px, 0px, and that'll take it to its root, okay? So 0 pixels is up at the very top. Well, I don't want to show that green. I want to show the black all the way down there. So I think what I'll do instead is I'll shift it negative 80 pixels. Each of my green, each of my colored bars is 40 pixels tall. So by shifting this background image up 80 pixels, I'll display the black on hover. Now that was pretty easy. It's simply using the same background image but showing the visitor a slightly different portion of that master background image. And as a reminder, this is what Apple does for their navigation. This is Apple's global navigation graphic right up here. So they're just shifting that background image around for different purposes. Other websites, whenever you see icons, it's probably actually a master graphic and they're only showing you a small portion of that particular graphic. So with ours, easy enough to shift around. And of course we could go a step further and work with our text. For instance, I could do a font weight bold for my text and of course I'll do a color white so it stands out a little bit more and since my button is actually 40 pixels tall I can do a line height of 40 pixels and that'll give the illusion kind of a vertical centering get rid of that underline don't want that underline on there now if I want a little space over there to the left a couple ways to go about it but you could get some weird reactions. Here's one thing I might try. I could do a padding left. Um, I'll just do 20 pixels for now just so you can see it. But look what's happening. By putting this padding on my uh, text, it's actually pushed and made my anchor a little bit wider. You'll see what's happening if I put borders back on there. So the padding has pushed my anchor out. Now there's that great um, box sizing property that could help out, but instead of maybe padding left, I could do something like a text indent. By putting text indent, I'll still get that spacing over there, but it won't actually push my entire anchor out. Now I don't need that border anymore. Go ahead and save that. Refresh. And now my anchor tags are looking a lot better. Okay, so that is the basics for using my background image and just showing the user different parts. Let's take this one step further and maybe make this into a horizontal navigation menu. So I'm just going to make my browser a little bit wider, kind of get that master image out of the way. We don't need that anymore. Let's see how easy it is to do this. I can go up to my list items, which by the way default to being block, one on top of the other, and I can change this out to float left to get these list items side by side and as soon as I do that they will start to appear side by side. Now you're probably wondering how come they all didn't go side by side and that's basically I've got um, I've got this graphic over here that's floating so I just needed room to accommodate them but now I have plenty of room and there we go. 
Now, what if I wanted these to be a little bit smaller? Right now, they're 40 pixels by 300 pixels. So what if I wanted to go a little bit scaled down? Well, in addition to setting the background image, of course, we can set our background size. And since my image is 300 pixels wide, I'll set this to 150 pixels wide. Now, just doing this won't be enough. It will make my background image smaller, though. Maybe you like that look. But then I just need to go through and I need to chop a lot of other things in half, too. So the width of my anchor tags should be 150 pixels. I'll make their height 20 pixels. Um, let's see, I only need to shift up by 20 pixels now. Line height, knock that in half. Text indent, I'll knock that in half. And then on hover, I don't want to shift up 80 pixels, I'm only going to shift up 40. So basically I'm cutting all of my numbers in half. Now when I refresh, I've got kind of a smaller scale uh, button set still vertical and of course or horizontal and if I take that float left off of my list items I can go back to a vertically oriented navigation menu. So I hope you enjoyed that and like I said you can have a lot of fun with it and there are places where you can find free background image sets and some of you if you're handy on Photoshop and things like that you can certainly make your own background image sets so that you can start making some sprite navigation. Take care.